So welcome everybody to our third panel of our workshop on digital markets and competition policy at the crossroad. So the third panel is going to be about underlying theories of harm behind the Digital Market Act proposal. Uh, I'm your host, I'm Giacomo Calzolari, I'm a professor of economics at uh, UI. Um, let me mention again that this uh, workshop is a joint collaboration with the competition program at the UI and the technology cluster, which is an interdisciplinary group of researchers at UI working on the effects of technology society, on society and policy relevant issue. And I'm very happy that we're going uh, with these activities, continue the long tradition of competition policy at the UI uh, between law scholars and economists. Um, so let me thank all of you, those attending on, online and our two distinguished speakers for this uh, third panel. Uh, the first one will be Martin. Uh, Martin Pait has contributed with Massimo Motta on a paper on the topic of the relevant theories of harm commission by the European Commission. Uh, of course, Martin is much more than that. He's professor of economics at uh, University of Mannheim. Is, is director of Mannheim Center of Competition and uh, Innovation, which is very active center. Uh, he has been member of the Economic Advisory Group on Competition Policy at the European Commission. He has extensively written about industrial organization competition policy, both with many important papers and also successful handbooks and manuals on which many students of industrial organization are nowadays struggling worldwide. Um, then Monica, our discussant, Monica Schneider, um, um, she has contributed with Patrick Cray and Greg Crawford to uh, a report as the Economic Advisory Group on Competition Policy of DGCOM on a paper on economic evaluation of EEC proposed new competition tool. Monica, she is a, a professor of uh, economics and chair of uh, comparative economics at the University of Munich. Uh, she has extensively written academic papers on innovation, competi competition policy, and innovation. She's a member of uh, the German Council of Economic Experts, uh, member of the Economic Advisory Group on Competition Policy of the European uh, DigiCom. And uh, she has been also a member of Scientific Advisory Council of the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and Energy in Germany. Um, so let me somehow set again the rules of the game as we did in the previous panels. Uh, I will give the floor to Martin, then uh, to Monica for uh, what is going to be probably more than a discussion. Um, then we will move to Q&A session both to both our speakers for the remaining time. So for those who are attending and who would like to ask questions, you can start write, writing during the presentation as well. Uh, so I, as in a good tradition for economists, I would like very much appreciate the brevity in your questions. Uh, and I will pick up the most challenging questions for our uh, speakers. So I will turn immediately the floor to our speakers, but maybe just a quick uh, remark. Let me add a quick remark. Uh, so we, with this session, we want to discuss uh, theories of harm that, they, that are relevant for the new competition tool and more generally behind the Digital uh, Market Act. Um, in some, we will be dealing about uh, economics and uh, mostly and uh, why markets may not be as competitive as they should, or at least we think they should. Um, I think it's going to be an important session uh, because, in a sense, with no theory runs, we should have stopped much before this discussion and we could have spent our time elsewhere. And, but the task is difficult because not only we need to identify solid and convincing theory of arms, they, also, they must also be arms that cannot be addressed by Articles 101, 102, and the merger regulation. We know that economists are very effective and very imaginative, especially academics, in identifying new theories of arms. Although I'm personally the enthusiast about the discussion we are having today about the new tool, and I personally think we do have significant gaps to uh, cover here, uh, we know that the devil is in the, the details. 
So I'm gonna uh, conclude with the, some questions that we we'll throw there in the floor. So are these theory of arms uh, fully credible? Are they relevant? And do we require a new competition tool to close the gap? So thanks a lot. Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, so from the number of participants, which are now there, I presume that some of my colleagues from the law side may have left the audience, but I hope still some are, some are still there. And I will not uh, delve into details of uh, specific uh, theories of harm and rather try to provide the uh, general uh, scope of what I think a new competition tool could accomplish. Um, so the report is written together with Massimo Motta, uh, but I may say things which are not in the report and then I'm the one to blame, it's not him. Uh, so we were, as the others uh, today, we were essentially uh, left with a, to uh, tackle a problem which seems to be a problem uh, the Commission is not necessarily interested uh, in any longer. But uh, that's something I will talk about uh, at the end. So first I will start off, well, the new competition tool or call it a market investigations tool. Uh, what is the, the overall role from overall perspective of, of such a tool? Well, clearly we do have sector regulation and that applies in particular to industries and markets where there is a serious and uh, in a way permanent competition problem. Uh, we think about certain utilities there, we do have sector regulation. Of course, we have also other specific regulations for sectors which are not due to competition issues, but uh, because of other issues. Um, so that's also possible. Uh, so we have those sectors and then we have uh, hopefully still a large part of the economy left where market forces uh, do uh, deliver typically at least. And there we have competition law uh, in order to make sure that firms do not engage in anti-competitive conduct in terms of agreements, certain abuse, uh, and also the merger regulation fits in there. And the question is whether there is some kind of gap and that's what the new competition tool uh, tries to address um, so that there are some markets which may work well, but there are some competition problems, but the current competition instruments which are available are not uh, doing the job well in the way that they are either not applicable or if they're applicable, they are too slow or of limited effectiveness. So when one talks about then market investigation, it's always a question also about adequate remedies. Uh, therefore, our original task was not to look at remedies, but then we put the remedies a bit in because it's somewhat uh, yeah, not very useful to talk about a new competition tool without knowing what the remedies could be. The way we view the, the NCT, how it uh, ideally should be done, it's a, as a market structure based competition tool with a horizontal scope to provide the authorities with instruments uh, to look at competition problems which are not covered by 101, 102, uh, the merger regulation and if applicable, the sector regulation. So here I want to talk first, so that's the first part most of the time I will use is how we think a new competition tool uh, should be done, what kind of uh, areas it could cover uh, and when it should be started. Um, fortunately, and I think that's something also uh, on the law side, which may be useful to keep in mind is it's not something which doesn't exist in this world. And it's also not something which just exists in some very obscure uh, jurisdiction. Uh, in particular, I would argue that the UK is not an obscure jurisdiction and there is a tradition of market investigations. I'm of course aware of the fact that 
uh, it's not a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship that exactly to transfer exactly how it is done in the UK. It's also useful to do at the EU level. Nevertheless, there is uh, a clear history of how market investigation has been used to address competition problems, and it has been used in a wide variety of sectors. And if you look at those sectors, here's a partial list. Um, they don't necessarily look to be very digital. Okay, so that's, I think that's good to keep in mind. So if we look at uh, the history of market inv investigations in the UK, uh, there is a wide list of sectors where there have been some perceived competition problems. And in some of those investigations, then remedies were imposed in order to address those competition problems. We would like to distinguish between theories of harm, which are based on market features and others which are based on conduct. Uh, so there may be certain features of the market which are beyond the control of individual firms, uh, which create a competition problem. So that's kind of the first step and uh, economists have been very inventive in providing those theories of harm. Uh, certain market features which uh, leads to the market not working well are pronounced economies of scale and scope, a uh, variety of different network effects, possibly data driven, but not necessarily so, switching costs and lock-in effects. Uh, there's also the interplay of asymmetric information slash limited information and market power. Um, and the interaction between market power and behavioral biases. And we note that those uh, factors may be present alone in combination, and they may be present in a variety of different industries and markets. Uh, we acknowledge that in digital markets, uh, we do see quite a bit of those, but that doesn't mean uh, that digital is just uh, something very special. Uh, the second cat type of categories of harm relates to conduct. Conduct may be done by dominant firms, where you might suspect actually that our standard competition tools might be, uh, will be sufficient. But it may also be uh, practices uh, in more or less narrow oligopolies, uh, which lead to competition problems. And they may, may be associated with, for example, common ownership and cross ownership. Uh, there may be issues of tacit collusion, including some types of algorithmic collusion, uh, which uh, would not fall under uh, prohibition. Uh, certain types of agreements between firms. Um, of course, uh, we may ask whether, uh, in theory at least, our existing tools may be sufficient to address them, but at least it seems that not often, uh, it hasn't been done too often. And uh, particular contractual clauses imposed on consumers. Uh, let me add a few words on dominant firm conduct. Uh, if we look, for example, at the uh, New German Competition Act that's uh, particularly concerned with this kind of conduct in digital. So there's a question uh, to what extent uh, hybrid platforms uh, can use uh, data of competing sellers to their advantage, to what extent they can copy certain uh, features. Uh, there are also other practices which actually happen not necessarily with dominant firms. They may even hold also an oligopolistic environment uh, which limit bypass. Uh, in principle, um, of course, these conduct can be dealt with under 102. However, there may be some issues with that one, uh, maybe too slow. It may de deal only with one particular practice so that we get kind of a walk or mole problem. So we prohibit uh, one particular practice and then there's another way of, uh, of reducing um, the intensity of competition, uh, and then that would trigger, in a, in a way, a new case. And uh, certain issues may be 
uh, relevant sector wide and uh, therefore just going after one firm which at that point is dominant uh, may not really be a very effective way of uh, going against this and competitive behavior. Um, so that's a quick view on the type of theories of harm which could be possibly dealt with under NCT. The question is, well, when to start a market investigation? Uh, we believe, uh, well, of course, you can just randomly start market investigations, but that doesn't seem to be a very effective way of, of dealing with possible competition problems. Rather, uh, we need possibly simple indicators and uh, to find out about uh, possible competition problems. And those are inter uh, intimately connected, uh, related to the theory of harm. For example, if there is a concern about tacit collusion, then of course we are after say collusive markers. There are also some uh, parameters uh, which just in general raise suspicion if there are prolonged um, periods of uh, very high profits in an industry. Of course, the question is uh, what is, it, is going on there? Is it these are just rents from innovation because it's a very innovative industry or is it actually an industry where there's little innovation and there's uh, some barriers to entry uh, which uh, leads to such uh, high uh, profits. We believe that uh, there should be uh, some, uh, well, not everything uh, is, is suitable for a market investigation. In particular, potential consumer harm should be sufficiently large, possibly because of long run effects or because of immediate serious harm. Um, so we would recommend to use uh, market investigations carefully. Uh, we know that although there are many markets where there is competition working, it's never working perfectly, but uh, it's also clear that um, the threshold uh, for, for an authority to intervene should be sufficiently high. And there should be feasible and appropriate remedies foreseeable for the particular theory of harm, uh, which uh, is under consideration. And therefore, if the, such an NCT doesn't provide adequate remedies, well, then it's not a very um, sharp tool and uh, it's, it will uh, be then dormant in a drawer. So thinking about using an NCT always requires thinking about appropriate remedies. For example, if you can't impose divestiture measures, then probably you don't want to look at common ownership too much. Yeah. Um, so in order, if common ownership is a problem in a, a serious problem in a particular industry, well, clearly a way to remedy it is to impose divestiture. Uh, here's a list of examples from the UK, uh, from a forthcoming paper by Amelia Fletcher, which shows that there are quite a number of different remedies which have been used by the UK authority. And uh, I guess if one wants to move closer implementing an NCT at a European level, it's really to think about what kind of remedies do we want to allow for? What is the power we want to give? And this then, if we limit the kind of remedies, we are also narrowing the set of theories of harm which can be used. Let me uh, use my remaining, I guess, what is it? Three or four minutes? Well, that's thumb up. It's not just a one minute, I guess. Thumb up is four minutes, five minutes. Yeah, very good. Let me comment on the current developments. I saw that this must be something which of course is in all the panels uh, somehow. Uh, so we are moving close uh, to the date where there's uh, the proposal of a digital markets act uh, with a gatekeeper regulation and uh, well, I wouldn't say even watered down but a deviated uh, NCT uh, becoming a market investigation regime uh, which more looks like now as an afterthought to the uh, gatekeeper regulation in case we don't get you there, we still have something uh, in, in, the, in the drawer to, to work uh, with certain behaviors. 
So it, it rather looks like a, an addition to a regulatory tool than a general competition tool. And that sense is very different from the new competition tool as it was initially discussed. So the initial approach um, was uh, really to identify a competition problem that cannot be properly dealt with with the current tools and then uh, to identify well, whether that's uh, indeed a competition problem or there are possibly adequate remedies available and then to do a market investigation. Now in a way it's like, look at the gatekeeper regulation. If there's something wrong and the gatekeeper regulation cannot catch it, then possibly use the, the mirror. And uh, well, I will leave it to others uh, to decide on what is exactly the set of competition problems uh, this mirror will be able to address and also uh, whether it deals well with the concern that it doesn't create too much legal uncertainty. So in particular, it has to be a set of who is in and who is out. And uh, that's uh, something I guess we will have to see. I guess there are two readings of the current developments. One is that it's possibly a, a chance missed. Uh, thanks to, uh, well, thanks to some, and I don't name those <laughs> whom we should thank uh, that it's missed. Or we could still be to end on a more positive note, uh, like Heike Schweitzer did this morning and see it as a first step in the right direction. Uh, provide a limited step uh, into a world in which um, also competition authorities can investigate, for example, anti-competitive uh, practices in oligopoly. Well, I'm not sure whether we will go in this direction with the current developments, but at least that could be still some hope. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Martin. Thanks a lot. Monica, the floor is yours as soon as Martin closes the share screen. Martin, are you closing your screen? <laughs> it's if you go at the top, ah, right, okay. great. Okay. So, okay, very good. Thanks. Okay, uh, once, uh, let me start by saying um, that I very much enjoy being able to um, be part of this uh, conference and uh, uh, to, to act as a discussant here. I should warn you that this is, oops, sorry. Okay, this is where I should start. This is not this is not a regular discussion in the sense that I now say I like this or I didn't like that. Um, actually, I agree with everything that Martin said, and hence that would make for a very boring discussion. So, so let me rather point out a few things uh, where I think more thinking needs to be done, um, and this is not so much. Um, 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 uh, the problem, uh, th these are not all new problems, actually some of them have been touched on um, in the previous discussions, but of course uh, we all prepared simultaneously, so that was um, what I could do before. Okay, so let me start by saying the way I understand it, we are now talking about rules, regulation and the new competition tool, which is now rephrased for the digital markets. Um, so there would be ex under regulation for dominant online platform platforms which, which act as gatekeepers and then there would this be the second tool. So the first issue, and it has been raised already, is this is now concerning only digital markets, um, but digital markets are of course more than just these online platforms. So the, the problem I see is in the end we'll be just be talking about something about uh, concerning the, the big US tech companies, is that all um, just done in order to do European industrial policy in this guise of a new um, competition tool, um, or, or is there more to it? Um, in particular, since it's really difficult to distinguish now traditional markets from digital markets in the sense that more and more uh, companies are relying in their business models on digital tools, so there's no way how you actually can separate them in the future, or very little actually. 
So when it comes to regulation, usually you would think of regulation for markets with stable long-term perspective. And the digital market is not such a market because lots of things are changing all the time. And um, therefore, as I learned from uh, Heike Schweitzer in our, our commission on, on, on German competition issues, um, in a sense, uh, rules are the preferable option. And, and here the rules that I discussed are this blacklist of problematic practices like self-preferencing or so on, and the positive list that would then uh, deal with things like data access, data portability, and so on. Now, in terms of the new competition tool, um, Giacomo mentioned it already, Greg Crawford, Patrick Gray, and I have also written a report for the advisory group on um, economic policy. And uh, what I'm going to say reflects to some extent what we discussed in this report, but of course, um, a lot of it is also my own interpretation. Um, it has been mentioned before, Martin um, um, uh, spoke uh, on that, uh, that this is now based on the UK market investigation regime. Um, and in this report that we um, prepared, we uh, go through a number of these cases and see what kind of theories of harm are used there. For instance, tacit collusion in the cement case or demand side issues, behavioral issues in the retail banking case, or these issues of high concentration barriers to entry in the airports. And uh, they all involve remedies, which were supposed to um, remedy the underlying problems and did so rather effectively, or uh, that was our impression. Um, the UK has little experience with digital markets or with market investigations in digital markets. Yes, there's this one notable exception, this is very recent um, study on, on online advertising. This is not a market investigation, it's only a market study, which means it doesn't come with remedies, uh, but only makes a recommendation in the end. But it's an omnibus case in the sense that it involves all kinds of issues. So network effects, economies of scale, lack of transparency, unequal access to data, you, you name it. And this is also what Martin said, that in digital markets, often a lot of these things come together. But interestingly, the UK did not at this point then go on and say, okay, now let's start a market investigation and come up with our own remedies. They, at this point, argue that uh, you should create a digital regulator and come up with a code of conduct uh, and pro-competitive interventions, but they did not do so themselves. Now, um, in this um, um, proposal that, that um, we are discussing, there are two types of structural competition problems that are discussed. One is you have already a lack of competition for all the reasons that were mentioned already. And the other thing is that you have a risk of insufficient competition in the future because markets may be tipping. And the second issue is something that was not a part of the UK market regime so far. And in that sense, uh, if one would go in that uh, direction, this would be really a uh, new ground. Now, the, re the, the reasons why we think the new competition tool is actually really a very nice tool is because it has this holistic, a proactive approach. You, focus on these anti-competitive effects, not on anti-competitive behavior. So you do not look for culprits, you do not find culprits. Um, and in that sense, it should be hmm, less of an issue for companies to, to be involved in such a case because um, it's not uh, that in the end you will be blamed, it's the whole structure that will be looked at. Um, so the focus is on all relevant parameters. Um, they are also, or behavioral issues that may be looked at, like uh, consumer biases that they have, not just the firm conduct. And the remedies can include behavioral remedies. And in this case, also not just for the company that is found guilty in any sense, but for all company, potentially for all companies and including structured remedies. Now, in our report, we thought there is really a strong case for this new tool. Um, and uh, we recommend uh, that in markets where the harm has already affected the market, you really try now to prevent competition, to address the factors that prevent competition in the markets with a broad scope uh, across uh, sectors within sectors. And also that like in the UK, consumer protection issues should be included because in lots of these cases, you do actually have an issue because uh, consumers have a problem because they, um, have asymmetric information, they have uh, behavioral biases, and separating them 
these issues from pure competition issues or may actually or make it very difficult to solve the, the underlying problems. Now, at this point, uh, as a little side remark, uh, in Germany, that would be actually a, a huge thing to, to include that because in Germany, these two things, consumer protection and competition is dealt with by two different ministries, which at this point of time, it so happens, are also run by uh, people, by ministers from two different parties. Um, um, so, so in Germany, I don't see that this is easy to, to manage, but we think it would be actually really good. The other thing is in markets where harm is about to affect the market, um, it's much more difficult to come up with recommendations on how, how you should actually make sure that you prevent markets from tipping in the future. What, what you can encourage is to foster competition for the market and to prevent leveraging market power in concentrated markets to, to adjacent markets. But, but really it's about this fostering competition for the market. That is the big thing here. Now, we say there's a strong case for this new competition tool, but we, in order to, to make this case really strong, we need to deal with all the potential problems and, and present convincing remedies. And the problems, if I want to play the devil's advocate, is in each case, we should come up with the relevant counterfactual. So what would be the ideal situation? What could we ideally hope for to achieve? And what is the underlying welfare function that we're thinking here? Is it really, as it is the case now, consumer welfare that we're thinking, how should we weigh short-term gains in terms of efficiency versus long-term losses in terms of, say, innovation? Or innovation as such, I mean, is innovation always good? Um, I'm working on innovation, I think it's a great thing, but sometimes innovation is not so good, so how should we value that? Um, should we care for competition as such, the number of competitors um, issues like um, um, if there's too little competition because um, um, the number of competitors shrinks, then the, the remaining ones will also have a lot of political power. How should we deal with all these issues? Um, is there a new way of thinking about that? And of course, the overarching uh, issue is how should we avoid legal uncertainty? That has been mentioned in the previous session already. But, but how do we make sure that the, the remedies are predictable for firms and will they hold up in, in court? And there are a number of issues, say, for, for consumers, if, if um, remedies say you, you, you um, want to have portability, uh, then they can only be effective if the consumers really coordinate and all switch from one platform to another. How would you make this happen? So simply having this rule may not solve the whole issue. And the same with with behavioral biases, say if there's asymmetric information and you prevent it, you, you present the information, but because the consumers simply don't act on that, as was the case in the UK, um, then, then how do you deal with that? Um, on a more general level, what this, this new competition tool in a way um, um, raises as a question is, are we now um, about to um, design the ideal economy? Is it now we as the yeah, yeah, benevolent dictator uh, arguing that this is what the competition should look like, the ideal economy, the ideal market should look like? Um, and, and therefore we, we need to, to come up with answers for all these questions. How to evaluate lower welfare short run, sacrificing benefits from, from economies of scale versus higher value in the long run. Um, what about structural remedies? Um, personally, I'm, I'm in favor of um, yeah, using that um, as well, but, but is a breakup perhaps too big an intervention? Um, if size, company size is achieved by merit, by investment, if it's actually efficient, is, is it a good idea to then use this kind of tool? Or should one in fact favor small economies for the reasons that I just mentioned startups in particular, and, and should in this case then come governments, for instance, also give preferential assignments to, to startups or smaller companies. All these things need to be discussed. So let me conclude by saying that I think this holistic approach to the digital ecosystem is very useful, um, but it should include consumer protection issues and it should include behavioral biases as part of the assessment. But you need, in order to run this um, a very carefully designed governance structure, and you need to state a clear goal, what you want to achieve with it, and uh, make sure that you avoid legal uncertainty as best as you can. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Monica. Um, I see that my comments about brevity in the questions was taken seriously. Uh, let me, probably too much, let me start with uh, uh, a couple of uh, questions that uh, I prepared for you. Um, so uh, the first question refers to, uh, uh, which is uh, to both of you, uh, why in your opinion are we talking about uh, this new competition tool uh, nowadays? Why, why it's now? Uh, I would really like to have the economist view about uh, um, about this. So, in a sense, these uh, theories of harm were there uh, since uh, quite a bit. Uh, I guess they're uh, all contained in Martin's, uh, Martin's uh, book. Um, so, the, I mean, the economic models that uh, are for, are the basis of the theories of arms. So. Um, I would like to ask you why now, and especially, of course, why not before? Uh, and I guess here, uh, the elephant in the room is the development uh, that we have seen in, uh, for digital markets. And, uh, and the reason I'm asking you this question is also because I, I think it's somehow uh, pointing to the um, deception that Martin was mentioning before about uh, what is uh, currently becoming the uh, what is left uh, of the new competition tool or at least the first uh, version that was in the agenda so why now should i start or just what mm -hmm. yes please well i don't think it's a question to the economist it's much more i mean it's on the political agenda so it's more a question to people uh, engaged in the policy debate. I guess uh, there is another panel, I guess, on, on general market power, market concentration issues uh, in a number of uh, economies in the world. Uh, so there is at least a perception and there is some empirical work hinting at uh, market power problems, not just in digital, but uh, across the industry. There is probably also then this uh, the additional issue which raises in the politic some politicians uh, attention the link between market power and inequality so i guess uh, that's at the at the broad level one reason of one why one uh, may want to look at uh, why there is uh, now this discovery perhaps for this issue then there is of course the digital part uh, where it's not clear that this has to be moved into a, the, the NCT. I think the, the gatekeeper regulation, it's a much more direct way of, uh, of, of addressing this. As you uh, may know, Giacomo, there are also some issues which are new, which are linked to digital, and which are not linked uh, necessarily, at least, to the gatekeeper part, which is the, the concern about collusion. Um, so I think that's. Uh, so I think there are a number of reasons of why one may be concerned, and it's, and that's is that's what my understanding was of the NCT is not to just push exactly in in one particular direction, but just just say well, uh, given that we have a number of concerns, uh, what would be the right way forward uh, for a competition policy that is, uh, yeah, that that provides more room for the authorities to go against um, outcomes uh, which are undesirable for society and for consumers, but still be structured in a way that uh, it's not uh, just political interference, but rather based on economic theories of harm. Monica? Yeah, so um, again, I'm not, um, yeah, I'm not uh, sure about uh, the political procedure here, how, how they um, came up with the now going in exactly that way. But it's pretty obvious that um, uh, in these digital uh, markets, um, we, we are now seeing the issue. We have this new huge competitors uh, from the US, uh, um, the European companies uh, have a difficult time. Um, yeah. Um, coming up with their own um, uh, products, um, feeling perhaps um, um, yeah, jeopardized in their own market position. And um, there's a huge discussion on, should we have more industrial policy promoting European champions? And, and all that leads in the end to the 
concern that something should be done about the, the competition issues. And, and that at this point, uh, the question then is, should you have a unified framework that um, yeah, is about the digital market? Because on the one hand, you can have the regulation. On the other hand, you can have the competition issues. But these are dealt with by two different uh, um, parties in the, in the um, European Commission. And so how do you actually make sure that this is uh, closely connected? Um, that um, may be uh, the issue. In a sense, these um, markets are, yeah, is, are now more complicated. And in, in some cases, it's not simply um, easy to find uh, one company is misbehaving because sometimes they are not misbehaving yet because they're not really dominant and still we have an issue, we have a problem. And therefore coming up with a new instrument like the new uh, competition tool could be a way to address these issues, but uh, they are clearly not designed for digital markets in the first place, but, but were developed for other, for, for markets, uh, traditional markets overall. And also this behavioral issues, also say privacy issues, all that could in, an, in, in such a scheme be um, yeah, taken account of or uh, taken care of, um, which is not, done in regular competition issues. Um, and hence, that would be a, um, a reason why you actually may not want to have this new regime of dealing with such issues. Thank you, Monica. In fact, you are covering uh, one question that we see that is uh, uh, whether the, we can conceive any, any interaction between privacy and competition here. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, Another question I have for you, uh, it has been discussed several times and uh, put forward as a, a big problem also in the previous discussions of this uh, uh, workshop, that this new competition tool uh, is actually an hybrid object, which is between competition policy and, uh, and regulation. And uh, so I would like to ask you to reason a bit, again, as economists, so not really thinking about the procedural issues that could be there, in fact, uh, for such an hybrid tool, whether you as economists uh, see uh, significant problems of uh, what we can call an hybrid uh, uh, tool. Martin. Well, I guess, one of the questions, so my understanding with regulation is that typically we would like to have a sector regulator then uh, dealing with this regulation and that uh, suggests that it's a problem which has been observed and it's going to be around for a long time, perhaps forever. And uh, my understanding is that the kind of problems we're looking at here are problems which can be remedied appropriately with a, essentially a one-time intervention. And so therefore I think uh, it's important when we talk about behavioral remedies to really take a look at what does it mean. If we think about certain behavioral remedies which require constant monitoring, uh, then I'm indeed skeptical that those kind of remedies should be used by a competition authority. Rather than we, if we think that this is really a serious problem, we have to ask ourselves whether we need a sector regulator, either an independent regulator, or well, you, can, you name it, how you're free to find the right institution, etc. But you need a separate, uh, separate expertise to deal with this. And my understanding is that at least also in digital, that some of the issues are possibly just temporary issues. We learn later on, it might be that some of them won't disappear. And then uh, perhaps some of the issues can be put into uh, sector regulation. Why my view as um, somebody being kind of looking both at competition and regulation issues for a long time is why I rather have uh, a preference to, if possible, to leave it with the competition authority is that the competition authority has a natural tendency to move on. They have different cases to deal with, possibly also mostly in different sectors, and they should look at the most pressing cases. Whereas once you have a regulator in place, this regulator um, moves on and finds uh, problems which are actually not initially the problems of the regulator, but whenever you have a market, you closer look at some people, consumers, some consumers make mistakes, for example, and then 
the question is, does the regulator need to step in? So therefore, I'm very uh, concerned about uh, a quick move towards sector regulation, uh, because that, especially in markets where innovations play a role, uh, being, play an important role, we, we may get into tr uh, trouble. That said, I do admit that, especially in, the, in, in some of the digital markets, we are looking at problems which go a bit beyond the kind of competition problems we're used to look at, because it almost becomes market design questions. Yeah, we see this in some of the cases, also at the, some of them at the European Commission, also in some, uh, some member states, where there are certain either commitments or remedies imposed, which really look like market design questions. That looks very problematic. On the other hand, I think we also have to admit it's not just some market where there's a number of players setting their own rules and then those uh, rules are played against each other, but rather we have a large part of digital which is uh, controlled by big players. So they are providing essentially the rules of the game for the ecosystem. And in that environment, then it's in a sense much more natural that also a public authority wants to uh, second guess uh, whether these kind of private regulation is the optimal way and whether society is actually better off with rules which are not imposed by those large private players. And, but I think that part then essentially is, is a bit outside the NCT that's supposedly dealt with with the gatekeeper regulation. So it's true that this uh, tool is sort of a hybrid object, uh, but that is exactly its charm. It can be used in a much more flexible way. And uh, there is regulation you use for, for a rather stable situation where you clearly have the dominant, uh, say, natural monopolist. Um, um, with this uh, hybrid object, you could have rules uh, for companies that are not dominant yet. And you could differentiate uh, those are who are more dominant uh, should perhaps uh, uh, adhere to these rules and, and smaller startups may perhaps be exempt from that. Uh, I think the overarching advantage is that it can be applied much more quickly and much more flexibly, whereas uh, with regulation that is always a long-term decision and you don't adjust this rule um, um, yeah, every year or so. But you do, even for this uh, a new competition tool, of course, you need uh, an authority who, uh, if there are rules, behavioral rules, uh, conduct rules, who, who monitors that. And in the UK, this is done by the um, uh, CMA. So um, since they, they are basically um, are responsible for everything, they also monitor. And, and here, the question then would be, who would actually be doing the monitoring? Would that be? DigiCom or would it be DG Connect? Um, um, so that's that's an interesting issue to, to be resolved. Uh, thank you. Um, um, so, uh, in fact, uh, we we discussed about the um, uh, theory of arms, both in terms of actual arms that can be um, already in the market. Uh, and already affecting consumers and, and uh, market efficiency. And we also discussed about uh, potential future arms. And, um, and there has been, again, it is a lot of discussion about these two dimensions of arms um, uh, also today. And um, I would ask you, I would like to ask you whether you would uh, Assign, so how would you uh, address these two different dimensions of actual versus uh, potential arms in, in, with the lenses of uh, um, an economy, of an economic analysis? Uh, Monica, if you want to go first. Yeah, so I, I think it's the potential future harms that are really difficult uh, to address. And here, um, yeah, in our report, we, we focus very much on this contestability. At least the, the, you should uh, make sure that uh, new competitors would have a chance to um, yeah, become a new competitor to replace the old competitor, even if uh, we are in a situation where the markets will tip and it's efficient that the market will tip. Um, 
But for this, as I said uh, before, or say portability of your own data may not be enough unless you make sure that, that the consumers coordinate. So that is, this is really a realistic option. I would personally also go further and, and argue that uh, in some cases you may want to question whether you want to go for the efficient market solution where the market tips because it's actually efficient and whether you may want to prevent this for the sake of uh, yeah, having competition um, in the future because it's not clear that while you have this monopolist, um, you get all the innovation that you really want to have. Um, but that is a, a, something to discuss. Uh, how much do we value this uh, efficiency, um, the short-term efficiency versus um, the long-term consequences? Arti? Well, I think everybody hopefully has forgotten the question, so I can just say anything. Um, okay, I can tell you the question, then you can say whatever you want. No, no. no. So the question, the question no, was no, about. No. Uh, Leave it like this. I'm, I'm very comfortable just to say oh, something. Okay. Um, <laughs> I believe uh, when we also talk about uh, potential future harm, we also should then think about. Well, what are the, the relevant remedies, possible remedies? And uh, one of the issues, I guess, which is relevant very much in, in digital uh, are the strategies where um, firms offer more and more services to the benefit of consumers. So that's the short-term benefit uh, with the removal of uh, competitors or removal of future competition. Um, and I think there, it's, there's really this big tension between efficiency gains and, uh, the, and the risk that uh, larger and larger parts of an ecosystem are completely in, under control of one firm. And I think, and that's in a way different in the digital than in a non-digital world because it's less costly to expand the reach uh, compared to what it's in, in many non-digital traditional industries. And uh, I think in the end, uh, I'm not even sure whether these are decisions which should be made by the competition authority, but uh, in some sense they require the legislator. So when we talk about uh, line of business restrictions, for example, I think these this requires the legislator. The legislator would have to say that uh, certain firms are not allowed to enter into insurance or into health, neither directly nor indirectly. So I think uh, that in a way, uh, so I think uh, while in theory we could think about these kind of future potential harm as being part of an NCT, when it comes to those questions, I would feel more comfortable if this is a decision by the legislator and not somehow delegated through an NCT uh, to a competition authority. There are other issues, I think, where it's less problematic, uh, where, where there's a clear, um, hopefully at least, a clear understanding of what are the, the competition implications. When we uh, think about, um, again, it's common, a lot of it is common ownership, so we see that uh, large players take minority stakes in interesting developments. And there, I guess, the counterfactual is, what is the, the, the market failure otherwise? Are there not other say, venture capital firms putting money in? Is there, what are the imperfections in the, uh, in the, finance, in the capital market um, which prevent those small firms in getting adequate funding without relying on the big players in the industry? Thank you. Um, uh, so uh, both of you mentioned about the uh, potential difficulties in uh, handling uh, and organizing the actual working of uh, uh, this new competition tool. For example, Martin, you, you were uh, asked with your reports also to address the issue of uh, uh, how to trigger an investigation, what would be the, the mechanism. And, uh, and certainly all, so this type of tool certainly requires uh, many resources. 
Uh, so as economists, we are ready, we are uh, somehow trained to think about uh, the allocation of scarce resources. And, um, and here, uh, there is the, or I'm asking whether you see the risk of uh, a gigantic task of uh, looking around the uh, markets uh, on a continuous time, uh, measuring different triggers, uh, so I would like to see uh, whether you see this as a, a actual real problem, whether it could be a, an explanation in your opinion of uh, the um, direction that this discussion on the new competition tool has taken in uh, specific sectors rather than an horizontal tool. So how do you see the implementation of the, the actual implementation of this tool, Martin? Well, so I, I talk about first the implementation of the tool the way I thought it uh, should be done as a horizontal tool. And in a way it's complementary. I mean, the market investigation doesn't operate in isolation. So you, there are certain hints that things are not going well. There are possibly complaints. Or you run a cartel case where in the end it's not really a cartel, but then you have hints that there is uh, something else going wrong, uh, as you have uh, suggested what may happen. Yeah, that it's perhaps not, uh, uh, there hasn't been any agreement among the parties, but it just happened that uh, the algorithms they were using, we are seeing higher prices. So what I want to see is the, that um, extra competition cases under uh, 101, 102, may hint at a problem so that something actually is not, uh, is fishy, uh, that there are certain market features which uh, leads to bad outcomes, um, but they cannot be dealt with under the existing tool. So that means it's kind of moved along starting from a particular case. Plus uh, there may be complaints. Of course, competitors can always complain. Uh, they may also just complain because they have an inferior product. Uh, but uh, they also along the vertical chain, you can get complaints. Uh, yeah, that on, on, for example, uh, very restrictive practices. And uh, that provides a hint to look at, uh, at those issues. So I don't think it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's rocket science. And uh, the point is with an NCT, it's, uh, I wouldn't even claim if it is used that necessarily all the relevant ones which should be investigated will be investigated. But if we at least uh, get some of the problematic um, market outcomes uh, with uh, remedied properly, I mean, that would definitely be a step forward. And now in, in, in views of the digital, um, I guess I will have to see how it is. Does it really broaden the scope so that uh, companies who would not be subject to the gatekeeper regulation will then be subject to such a narrowly defined NCT or is it just as a uh, seen as a way of dealing with things which are in a way unforeseen for those companies which are already subject to the gatekeeper regulation? I think that uh, will have to be seen. If it's the former, uh, then I guess uh, what I have said applies subject to being considered digital. Um, rather than, than following up on this, um, I would uh, like to come back to what Martin said before when you suggest that uh, that uh, such decisions should be taken actually in some cases by the government, that there should be legislation by parliaments um, rather than all this should be dealt with um, by, by competition authorities when it goes about, when it's about future harm. Um, I want to take this as a, as a um, point again in order to discuss the political dimension of this whole thing. Um, again, I, I started in the beginning saying that the reason why we discuss this so much is because the, the um, Big platforms are US tech companies and, and Europe is, is concerned that we are, um, yeah, have no chance to compete. The question then is always, where do you experience more lobbying? Because there will be a lot of lobbying. Will the competition authorities be more, under more pressure from lobbying or is it the governments? Um, and that's a political question. Other people may know better, but, but I would say who should decide should also be 
um, um, yeah, that should also depend on who is under more pressure from lobbying. Um, and in some cases, it's actually a very good idea that um, we do now go after these big tech companies because we are, um, yeah, we are not one of them. Or Europe doesn't have one of them. So actually, if it's really about the competition, then, then maybe um, we are in a much better place to, to go after them than the US, where they will be under lobbying from their own big tech companies who, who are not happy of, of being more restrained. Um, as is the case, let me let me bring a um, very bad example for Germany. Uh, the, it, the diesel scandal was discovered by U.S. authorities, not by German authorities, because yeah, arguably German authorities did not have such a big incentive to go after their own companies. So, in some cases, it's actually a good idea that that you have authorities who go after cases, perhaps for the wrong reasons, but with the right uh, outcomes. So, so this political dimension, I think, is really uh, important to, to um, consider. Thanks a lot. Uh, we are right on time. Uh, so let me thank our uh, speaker and discussant uh, for this very interesting um, uh, panel. So uh, let me thank you again. And uh, let me remind you that the workshop will resume at 4 p.m. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.